Good morning. Good morning. It is a very cold and crisp morning. Good to have all of you with us as we join in God's presence as the people of God. Although someone pointed out to me, it's only about five degrees below normal. So you know, we just got a little, um, a little used to a little bit milder weather. So winter is back. But good to have all of you with us. <clears throat> a couple things before we begin. Please make sure that you uh, pass the pew pads or at least enter uh, your, your name on the pew pads so we know that you're here. That's always helpful for us. Um, following the 1030 worship this morning is the annual meeting. We invite you to come back for that. Um, we don't anticipate it to be real a real long event, but it is always important to gather and to, uh, to reflect on our mission and our ministry and to make the plans that we we have for the coming year, so uh, please join us for that. And annual reports are on the table in the gathering area as you depart. Please feel free to grab one uh, as you leave. If you get there and you don't find one, please uh, see me or Pastor Gene, and we'll make sure that you get one. Um, I don't know if we have some more in the office. We have a couple more in the office we can dig up, so <clears throat> let us know if you need that. We do have two prayer concerns that we want to lift up. Um, this morning, we want to keep Errol Kinchy in our prayers. Uh, Errol will be having surgery this coming Friday, so um, please please keep him in your prayers as he undergoes that procedure. And then also we want to keep um, Todd Michael's father, Laverne, his health is deteriorating. We want to keep um, Todd and his family, Todd and Ingrid and their family in our prayers as they continue to support Laverne and um, and pray that that goes, goes well as God calls it to go. Our order for worship uh, this morning, we're using a setting that uses a number of liturgical pieces that are based on hymn tunes, so you should find them uh, fairly familiar. Um, I'll try to make sure I give you page numbers so that you are in the right spot at the right time. The, uh, we begin with Confession and Forgiveness. It is on page 211 in the front of your hymnal, page 211 in the front of your hymnal. As you are comfortable, would you please rise? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The opening hymn is hymn number 717. Mm -hmm.
front of the hymnal, page 200. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Redeemed you from the house of slavery. 
And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam, son of Beor, answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what the Lord, what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. The word of the Lord. I'd like to invite the children up for a message. So how are you guys? You good? Okay. So I have a question. Have you ever heard the song, if you're happy and you know it, what are you supposed to do? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands, right? What happens if you were a bird? If you were happy and you know it, what bird do? Flap his wings, right? Yeah? Or fly, that's good. If you were a puppy dog, if you were happy and you know it, what would you do? Bark? Or what else? Wag your tail? Yeah, okay, wag your tail. So if we changed those words, instead of being happy, if we said, if you're blessed, clap your hands. And if you're blessed, clap your wings. And if you're blessed, wag your tail. Okay? So in the story that I'm going to read in a couple minutes, Jesus talks about being blessed, people are blessed. But the people that he talks about that are blessed aren't happy. They're not wagging their tails and they're not clapping their wings or clapping their hands. Because the people are sad and they're poor, so they're hungry. And things aren't always going right in their life. Sometimes there are people who yeah, are mad at them or, or mean to them and stuff. But Jesus says those people are blessed. Does that make sense? Doesn't sound right, does it? But do you know what Jesus says? Jesus says that he is always with us, right? And so we are blessed because Jesus is always with us. And it doesn't matter what's going on in our life, whether we're happy or whether we're sad or whether people are mean to us. Because Jesus is always there with us. And so we are blessed no matter what's going on in our life. Does that make sense? Yeah? So, so what, what, what do we need to remember? We need to remember we are blessed, right? Why? Because who loves us? God, right? God and Jesus. And they're always with us, right? Okay. So, so since we're blessed, can I give you a blessing? Okay, so may you be blessed and Jesus fill you with his love. You are blessed and may Jesus fill you with his love. Cool. But you know what? Are you the only two who are blessed in this place? Who else is blessed? Everybody out there, right? Do you think they should get a blessing too? Could you help me do that? Okay, so let's stand up. And you know, when Pastor John and I in church, when we do blessings, we put our both hands on our cup, because that's a, that blessing. So put both of your hands up. Okay? So try to come on this side, and maybe you on that side. Put your hands up. Okay, repeat after me. May Jesus bless you. Jesus bless you. And fill you with his love. Do you all feel blessed now? Yeah. All right. Good job. So this week, when you're off and about, Show God's blessings, okay? Good job. As you're comfortable, would you please rise for the gospel affirmation?
The Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up to the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So how are you today? Pastor John tells the story of a man he knew who always answered the question and said, terrible. When he asked him why he always said that, he said, everyone always expects you to say fine. I want to be different. But seriously, how are you doing? Happy? Well off? Or maybe just okay? Or even hurting or tired? Or in the words of poor Richard's almanac, maybe you are healthy, wealthy, and wise. In fact, let's do this. I'll give you a moment. Come up with a word. Just how are you doing? What word would you use? Got a word in mind? I guess for me, I'd use stressed. But I've been thinking about this for a few days now. My devotion on Friday asked the question, how are you today? But it went on to tell a story. A pastor asked someone in their community, someone from the other side of town, how are you doing? And the neighbor didn't say terrible or even fine. He said, I'm blessed. Not the answer the pastor was expecting to hear, but an answer that stuck with him. Now picture this for a moment. If someone tells you they were blessed, what comes to your mind? How do you imagine them to be? Surrounded by wealth? Or maybe in perfect health, especially for their age? Maybe someone who is just so satisfied with life right now, happy and fulfilled, lacking for nothing. Maybe their life is going as they hoped and planned. Or even, who knows, maybe they just won the lottery. What you probably aren't picturing is someone for whom challenges are pretty significant right now, and especially not someone for whom challenges are always a part of life's journey, someone dealing with health concerns or broken relationships, someone struggling to feed their family or needing a place to sleep, someone who never seems to be able to get ahead or is unlucky. And yet, surprisingly, these are the very people who Jesus tells us are blessed. Not someday, you know when the first shall be last and the last shall be first. And not finally, when their ship comes in, or karma or fate finally smiles upon them, or their number finally comes up in the lottery. No, Jesus proclaims, you, the poor in spirit, you are blessed right now. No money, poor health, broken lives, it doesn't matter. You, the least expected, are blessed. And how can that be? It's simple. We are blessed when we are in fellowship with God and God's people. We have come to the point in the Gospel of Matthew where Jesus is ready to begin teaching his disciples. In the last few weeks, Jesus has been preparing for this moment. He was baptized. He was tempted by Satan. He called his first four disciples. He taught in the synagogues, proclaimed the good news, and cured diseases and sickness. Now he begins a series of sermons. But unlike a few preachers you may have heard recently, Jesus teaches with real authority. For remember, 
Jesus is not just a good proclaimer of the word. Jesus is the word. And so Jesus, the word, gathers the crowd around him and begins his first sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. Instead of inviting the crowd to sit down and get comfortable before he begins, Jesus sits down. In the ancient world, that's what teachers did. And he just jumps right in. No introduction, no buildup, no sugarcoating his words. He just tells them like it is. And the very first word of teaching to come from Jesus, blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed are those who are reviled and persecuted for Jesus' sake. Spoiler alert. Remember, the first word out of Jesus' mouth is blessed. But we'll come back to that. But what about this blessed business? The Greek word is makarios, and makarios can have several definitions or inferences. One definition is blessed, but it can also be, also be translated as fortunate, happy, privileged. But how can the people Jesus lifts up today be happy? There is no happiness in being poor, or mourning, or meek, or hungry, and certainly not being reviled and persecuted. And all those whom Jesus is lifting up as being blessed don't fit our stereotyped picture of someone who is blessed. And maybe that's the problem. Our idea of being blessed revolves around our happiness. If I'm happy, then I must be blessed. But if I'm not happy, then I'm not blessed. And I should be happy. Especially in our culture, I am almost entitled to be happy. And if I'm not happy, well, someone is going to pay for that. And so I go about my life trying to find my happiness because it is owed to me. I don't go around trying to find blessings. But Jesus isn't talking about being blessed as being happy. Jesus is talking about being really blessed truly blessed, authentically blessed. Jesus is talking about that fellowship, that relationship with God. Being blessed is feeling like you are not alone, like you are accompanied wherever you go. Being blessed is feeling like you have value and worth, not because of something you did or might do, but simply because of who you are, a child of God, claimed and chosen. Unlike happiness, blessedness does not depend on wealth, health, or status. It is not a reward for something we do. It can't be earned, or gathered, or accumulated. And surprisingly, it's not something I can lose. You know, like the keys that I can't find, no matter how hard you look. And that's just it. It's not about something we do. Blessedness is a gift from God. It is the promise of abundant life, and it is God at work, and God's work sticks. And so the sermon, the first sermon begins, and begins with blessing. And the first blessing sets the stage for all that is to come. Blessed are the poor in spirit. When one is poor, one is lacking, worn down. When we are poor in spirit, poor in heart and mind, we are emptied. Bad news, to be sure. Or is it? When we are empty, there is a sense of barrenness and lifelessness, even vulnerability. That's not good. But when we are empty, we are also open. There is nothing to clutter our hearts and minds. There is room for something to come in and fill us, as opposed to being wealthy, wealthy in spirit. When we are full of ourselves, we know it all, show it all, and do it all. There is no room for anything else or anyone else 
among the busyness. And that's the problem. When we are wealthy in spirit, there's no room in the inn, so to speak. No room for the one who seeks a place in the inn. No room for Jesus. No place for Jesus to dwell in our hearts and minds. No room for blessing. For the poor in spirit, there is room for God to work, for God to bring life and hope, for God to bring blessings. Which brings me back to blessings. Remember what I said earlier, the very first word out of Jesus' mouth is blessed. Blessed. Blessing. God at work. God bringing life and hope. God gifting hurting and broken people. The gospel in a nutshell. We heard last week that Jesus was proclaiming the kingdom of heaven to be near, even in places where powers beyond us claim us and threaten us. In the worst of times, God is at work. This week, we finally hear what Jesus proclaims. And to the hurting, he proclaims blessings. He proclaims God at work in their lives. Work that will go all the way to the cross, the empty tomb, and beyond. But for now, we have a sermon. And we have blessings. Jesus does not give us a roadmap for success and happiness. He does not give directions for how to live a better life. Instead, he proclaims that God regularly and relentlessly shows up where we least expect God to be, so that we can be freely given what we can neither earn or achieve, the gift of blessedness. It is precisely in these times of disappointment and despair, vulnerability and brokenness, that we can leave behind our stereotypes about blessings being happiness, wealth, status, or power, and be open to the presence of God, who gifts us with blessings, that we might be a blessing. One final task. I asked you earlier, how are you? I said stressed. Think of your word. Now remember the words of Jesus. Blessed be. So move beyond how are you. Ask yourself instead, how are you blessed? Take a moment and think of a word or an image. How is God blessing you right now? And remember, it may have nothing to do with happiness. In your baptism, you were claimed by God. Be blessed, children of God. Amen. As you are comfortable, you please rise as we sing hymn number 546.
please join me in our profession of faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Call together to follow Jesus. We pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Before you this day, all of your servants who seek your healing touch in the midst of their journey, we especially pray for Errol and for Laverne, and we ask that you surround them with your grace of life, lift them up, strengthen them, give them hope, remind them of the blessings, the multitude of blessings that you have given to them and that you continue to give to them and to all of your people. Give them life and give them hope. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Praise to you for your blessed saints in every time and place, trusting to overcome them in poverty, persecution, and in every trial. We trust you your life to the people of all. Receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. God's peace. God's peace.
may be seated. It is, it is Hungry Jar moment, so if we have any kids who want to bring things up for the Hungry Jar, Hungry Jar is right here. The recipient again this month is the uh, Women's Clothes Closet at Our Savior's Lacrosse. And if there are any adults who want to bring things up, you can come running up too and put things in the Hungry Jar, or just flag down one of the kids to bring it up for you. They would be happy, I'm sure, to make that trip. While they do that, I want to share with you yet another one of the ministries that are part of the mission of this congregation, um, the West Salem Community Assistance Fund. For many years, the West Salem clergy and the congregations of West Salem have worked together to meet the occasional and incidental needs of people. A tank of gas, a bag of groceries, assistance with utility bills, um, even once a new used tire for a car. All of those through the West Salem Community Assistance Fund. The funding, the funding comes from the congregations in the community, including our saviors, and I am the current administrator of the fund, but the ministry is really a community outreach. It is not solely this congregation, which is, which is really a good thing. Um, assistance that West Salem Community Assistance Fund gives is never in cash. It's always a voucher to a local business. And while we are here for the West Salem folk, we occasionally assist those from outside the community. Several years ago, um, on a summer afternoon, I got a phone call from the police department. There was an individual who had some health issues, but who also needed to get home to Mississippi. And so we provided um, lodging for a night and then a bus ticket so that that individual could get home where he needed to be. <clears throat> With the growing importance of this fund and the reduction in Salvation Army presence in the community, um, the clergy, the pastors got together and we decided to make a bit of a change in the assistance fund. And so what we did is we developed a larger group to give direction to the fund and that brought together leaders in the community. So when the West Salem Community Assistance Fund team meets, it includes some pastors, but it includes the police department, it includes several people from the schools, we've included people from Gunderson, we've had people from the business community, We've really made it a really community gathering. Um, and this larger group has now established an emergency fund, one of those things that we hope we'll never use, but it's available if there's a large scale emergency, such as a major house fire, like an apartment building, flooding, tornado, things we hope never happen. But it's there if we need it. And we also continue to look at other needs in our community besides simply dollars. If you're interested in that, you are welcome to join with us. Um, I think our next meeting is March 15th, I think it is. It's the middle of March, it's on a Wednesday afternoon. It might not work for you, but if you're interested in being a part of uh, the conversations about the needs of our community with kind of a broad-based group, we would love to have you join us. And we also um, recognize that, that being part of our ministry here at Our Savers, it's our commitment to be connected to the community and to hear the community and respond to the needs of the community to be blessed, as Pastor Gene talked about, but also then to be a blessing to others. So thank you for your support of what we do as a congregation, for the many ways in which we're able to do ministry and mission, one of those, the West Salem Community Assistance Fund. Thank you for your support. As you are comfortable, would you please rise and join me in the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed our right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs>
was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Would you please join me in the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God. As you receive the sacrament, please note that we have gluten-free wafers in addition to the standard wafers. We also have grape juice in addition to the wine. If you have need of those items, please uh, indicate that to us as you come forward. Also, as you come forward, you may recall from uh, Pastor Jean's sermon, as she completed the sermon, she made use of the font, made reference to our, um, our status as baptized children of God. The font is here. There is water in the font. If, as you come forward, you'd like to dip your hand in the water, splash a little bit, maybe make the sign of the cross, please feel free to do so, to remember that you are a blessed child of God. You may be seated. We continue with singing Lamb of God, and then we'll be singing the communion hymn, hymn 661.
As you are comfortable, would you please rise and would you pray with me? Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Normally at this time, I mean, in the good old days, um, we would share communion. We would invite those who are taking communion to the whole mom to come forward and to receive a kit that we had prepared from the altar with the leftovers, with wine and grape juice and the um, wafers from the altar, and folks would take them to our home mom. We are going to restart that ministry. But that's a ministry that, um, a practice that was carried out um, eighth and back in the second century. So we are doing that here as well. The people bring the sacrament, they bring the reading of God's word, they pray, and they chat. But most of all, they bring themselves, and through their presence, the presence of the body of Christ, they bring you as well. I don't know if there's anybody here right now who is um, planning to be to take communion to the home out, but we will, we have people last night, we'll have people next service, um, but we will do a blessing now for them, and a blessing for any of you who also will choose to do that as well. So let us please receive this blessing. God of hope, of life, and of blessings, we ask your blessing on this day on your servants who have answered your call to reach out to those unable to be with us in the gathered community. As they bring to them the gifts of this table, may they also bring the presence of this community, the message of hope and the gospel, and most of all, the new life that we have in the crucified and risen Jesus who comes to us in bread and wine. Bless them as they do their work, and bless those who receive their ministry. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now the God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, may God bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always. Amen. We conclude with singing hymn number 551, hymn number 551. Follow the way of Jesus. <laughs>